morning guys. So today we are actually going to be doing an updated video on how to change the Kenwood load screen for all the new units uh, in the 2018 lineup. And the reason for the new video is basically some of the new screens have different resolutions and we're also going to give you some of the lower models and the JVC models as well in this guide. We're going to give you a, uh, what you can see over here is an Excel guide um, so you can download it and take that step by step as well. So. Look, one of the first things you're gonna to need to do is watch our video guide on YouTube. So if you're watching this video, you're probably already watching it, but if you're on our website, please click on this video. Watch the entire guide so you get an idea of what you will be doing. And we'll discuss some of the quick changes that have happened this year to, to make this update possible. Now, one of the things we're gonna do is just here, we've got download the Excel guides, okay? So you're actually gonna click that, that will download a zip file which has three or four different files these will be the files over here on the right side of my screen and they will have all the updated instructions resolutions and specs that you will need for each different unit so for any of the top end models the ddx9 8 series dnx series uh, this is going to be the excel file for anything below that uh, some of the smaller or cheaper models this will be uh, the specs for you guys and we also have the jvc ones in there now this will download as a zip file. You may need to right click this and download link file depending on your browser and then you unzip it and you'll get all these files. Also included will be this. This is the open opening customization TXT file. So this is just a basic text file that shows um, some information that the unit's gonna read. And we're gonna do a little bit with that to show you what needs to be done. So. Firstly, let's look at something like what we sell. We sell a lot of the DX9 series and DMX8 series. And this is what you're gonna get when you open your Excel spreadsheet. Uh, so we're using numbers here because we're using an Apple Mac. Now, these are the specs depending on your model. So you're gonna look at your model on the left-hand side here. So if it was a DNX series, DNX9, which is your nav, or DDX, which is just your normal CD, DVD. It's gonna tell you what format you need. So you need a BMP file format for all of these. And this is the prepared image size for each of the models. So you can see on the top models, they've got HD screens. So the pics, uh, the resolution will be slightly higher, okay? The file size will end up crunching down and saving to this size, which is the HD size, and this is your normal size. It must be 16-bit full color with the red, green, blue ratio of 6.656. And this will give you all the information on that. Now, in the tabs over here, you can click on these depending on the model that you have. So for example, if we're gonna use a DDX9 series here, you can actually see it still has those specs for you. This text file it talks about is this one here, the opening customization text. And we're gonna explain that quickly in just a moment. But this is a guide on how you will crunch the images. So you'll be able to access all this. Now. What you're gonna do is you're gonna create your image and you're gonna save your image. And you can save it as whatever you want to save it as. It says it here. So file triple X or 4x.bmp. And whatever you save that image file as, you're gonna load that onto your USB. But you must make sure in your customized text file that it says it here is the name of the file that you are gonna be uploading to the start screen. So you have here image one. So here we would write image one on the saved file that we're gonna use. And you must use this, it says here, version 9876, so that's here, and that is it. Now, that will tell it when we're loading and reading the USB what file to use. Now, if you make a mistake, this year we are gonna show you, you can change it back to the original Kenwood unit or the original Kenwood splash screen. All you need to do is change these four numbers to 0000 and then reload it and it will return to the Kenwood screen. So if you make a mistake on your image file, don't be scared, you can return it to normal. So what you're gonna do, we actually show you this on a video um, in, in, in real life just after this tutorial, but you're gonna tap the corners. In the standby mode of your unit, you're gonna tap the top left twice, tap the bottom right twice, once up the top, once down the bottom, and that will open up the, the opening splash screen or the customization menu. So you'll see it here, opening customization. So you'll open the customization once you already have your USB in one of the USB ports. So some of the Kenwoods have a single USB or dual USB, you can use either, and you will click this open customize. It will actually read that TXT file 
And once you're finished, you can press this button this year, initialize factory default. Alternatively, you can turn it off and turn it back on again, and that will load the new startup screen for you guys. So you can customize that to anything that you want out there. There is slight changes, like I said, in preparing the image. You can see that here on each of the different models. So make sure you check that out. Again, if we have the JVC, you will see that here. I'll quickly give you a look at that. So if you have the JVC models, this will give you the specs for those as well. Now, a couple of things to be aware of. You must format your USB card to FAT format, FAT32. And there must be nothing else on it. And it must be on the very top hierarchy of your USB. So let's just pretend this was the USB on the right here. You must just have that opening text file in there plus the image file, okay? None of this other crap here. So this is the TXT file for download right here. Again, you will just right click that, download the link file, and it will download it for you. And as you can see here, it's just downloaded it and you can see it. All right, so guys, I'm gonna load a quick video after this. I'm gonna cut that in so you can actually see how it's done in real life. But that is a guide for you. Just be aware, this is a guide only, guys. It's up to you to use it. Like I said, you can return it back to normal. It's no fret if you wanna change it back to the Kenwood unit. It's not gonna be a worry this year. Very easy for you. Everyone that has the earlier models, you can watch our video on our YouTube channel, Carbon Car Systems. We show you on last year's model as well, but this is a good reason to customize and change your unit on the Kenwood. It's actually gonna give you that customization. You put any pictures on there, it makes it really personalized for you guys. So once you've downloaded those files onto the USB, you're gonna plug it into either one of the USBs in the unit, and this will work as mentioned for the DDX 9017-917WS, uh, the, also the DMX7017 and the DNX9170, uh, which is the nav unit. What you need to do is go into the unit and the first step is to put it in standby mode. Once you're in standby mode, you need to touch the top left corner twice, bottom left corner twice, top once, bottom once, okay? It'll open up this customization menu and once you've got that USB in, and it must be in first before you start touching the screen, and then click open customize. It will come up, opening customize, okay. Then you can just reset the unit and you'll see that it's changed to a new startup screen.